of the final players championship event of 2020. 2021 and it will be contested between the same two players that contested the final players 25. championship event of 2020 we've been here before they've been here before Christoph Ratajski has certainly been here before because it is the fourth consecutive year in which he's played in 25. the curtain closing match or will it be him who takes the title or will Joe Cullen bookend 25. the year with players championship wins he won the first of the season won one in the middle of the year as well and he's looking to end with a fantastic victory Bullseye. and what has been a fantastic day for Joe Cullen one that's seen him confirm his place at the Grand Slam of Darts for the second time five. Joe's won the ball. he's up against a tough opponent in Christoph Ratajski it's been a, a fabulous year of darts potentially at times a bit of a changing of the guard the likes of Joe Cullen Johnny Clayton consistently 58. making the latter stages of tournaments Jose Di Souza of course as well we've seen the likes of Dobie Ross Smith Callan Rids all win their first titles and Dirk van Dijven Bode on the floor but it is a repeat of last year's finale and once again Paul Nicholson alongside me Chris Murphy to talk you through this last live stream match on PDC TV this year it's been our pleasure to bring this to you throughout the course of 2021 and first I would like to congratulate the PDC on putting on all 30 this year it does feel a little bit strange, I'm not going to lie, that this game is happening again. 100. It doesn't feel that long ago that we were sitting in what was a kitchen in Coventry commentating on this match 12 months ago. And on that occasion, Cullen was irresistible. But he wasn't as good as he was in the semi-final today. Yeah, Joe Cullen, absolutely magnificent in that. Showdown with Michael Van Gerwen, 111.28, the average for Cullen in that one. Absolutely remarkable. He's averaged over 100 in his last three matches. Wins 60. against Callan Rids, Danny Nopper and MVG. Or a Taishki. Looking to start in style. But he can't manage... To get a go at the bullseye. 98. And that leaves Joe Cullen maybe needing to take out this 116 to hold his throat. Highest finish of the day is 148. He's not going to add another ton plus check out to his collection. But Tyski will go treble 12 here. Single 20 for tops. And this is why it's a good shot for him. 52. Because the darts are flat and the 20 is not in the way. But he can't find the target and gives Cullen a shot to hold on double six. Game shot. Starts in the same sort of vein that he did against MVG. Finding his feet, giving a chance. And it was at this point Michael started to put his foot down but then was reeled in. First to eight in this one 100. though. When they did play it 12 months ago, Murph, it was 8-4. Yeah, Cullen, well, that match against Callan Rids had extra significance, didn't it, in the last 97. 16? Because Rids was the only player left in the field at that point that could have stopped Joe Cullen making it to the Grand Slam without going to the qualifier here tomorrow. Now, Rids averaged 107 in that match. He would have had to win the title, but Cullen stopped him. Danny Nopper averaged 108 in the next match, but Cullen stopped him. And Michael Van Gerwen averaged more than 104 in the semi-finals, but Cullen stopped him. 96. At which point do you think that the Rockstar is bulletproof? Because they are incredible stats. They're great performances. And we watched the Callan Ridd's performance against Joe, where he missed a 161 on the bull and a 170 on the bull. And they could have changed the game, but Ratajski is changing the game right here. He sets up 41 after 9, and Cullen leaves 170 just in case. Yeah, what a leg of darts from Ratajski. Back-to-back -back 180s, in it. Game shot. And he does go out in 11 darts. Just to just remind Joe Cullen, well, you're going to get the same kind of performance against you in this final 96. as you've had in the last three matches. Cullen will expect that. He knows that Ratajski is a very good operator, but... Cullen's experiences against Ratajski in the last 12 months have been excellent. He beat him in that final 12 months ago. 
And then in two players' championships this year, both in quarterfinals and in all three games in the last 12 months, Joe has averaged over 101. 100. I would expect nothing less from the Rockstar in this game as well. So Cullen's won the last three after losing two to Ratajski in European Tour events in early 2020 99. and late 2019. Of course, when Ratajski went on to win the title in Gibraltar. And by the way, it's not a bad list of names that Christoph Ratajski has beaten to get to this final today. Uh, Barry Van Peer and Jose Hostice are in the first two matches, but after that, Nathan Aspinall, Simon Whitlock and Johnny Clayton before defeating Darius Labanauskas in the semi-final. Glad to bring up Simon Whitlock because if Joe Cullen wins this tournament at Minehead, he will play Simon Whitlock in the first round. 99. Yeah, just to explain that, the seedings make up the draw for the Players' Championship Finals. So the number one, who will be Jose de Sousa, will take on the number 64, Devin Peterson, in the first round. 96. And that will be confirmed at the end of this match. Joe Cullen make this the end of this leg. Game he can, on double 10. Great stuff for 15 darts. Talk about Ratajski and who he could play at Minehead. Well, if he loses this match, he will play Jason Heaver, who's had a decent first year on tour. He's comfortably inside 96. the top 64. But if he wins, he will play Ron Mullenkamp. 60. Before this final began, they both had 19 180s coming into it. And... You remarked, Murph, to me that that's a lot for Ratajski. He's not known as a big 180 hitter, but Joe is. Yeah, really, Ratajski's well known as a, a 140 machine. 59. But he's converted plenty of those into maximums today. Now on 21, having hit two in the same leg in this final. 100. I've actually seen Dirk van Dijvenbode hit more maximums than anybody this year. 19 today, going ahead of Jose de Sousa in that particular metric for the season a record-breaking haul from dvd doesn't get anything for it though does he 85 oh, that's it, isn't it 180s for show titles come with dough yes they do ten thousand pounds for the winner so this is a game for four thousand pounds and of course four thousand ranking points and if you look at where they are in the world they're pretty close to each other in fact, Ratajski is just ahead of Joe Cullen in 13th, with Joe at 97. 14. That's not going to change. But what could change is the scoreline here. Over the course of the next four darts, or possibly three. Well, Cullen couldn't take out the 161. And Ratajski can't give himself a chance to take out the 164. So a real opportunity 57. here for the Yorkshireman to open up a bit of a gap in this decider. He uses shot. the darts on the outside of that double 12 to plant the third one in to get his third leg on the board and to move too clear in the final of the last player's championship event of the year. You just 100. wonder if Joe's playing with a little bit of freedom now, knowing that he doesn't have to come back for the qualifier tomorrow. He's had some heartache when it comes to the Grand Slam in previous years, not being included, even though he's 85. won a tournament in the year. But where would you assess his chances of going deep in that tournament? Well, look, yeah, last year was his 100. first appearance at the Grand Slam of darts, wasn't it, for Joe Cullen? And that you could, you could argue, Murph, that... Yes, it was the Grand Slam of darts in Coventry, but it didn't feel like it. Yeah, he was in the Grand Slam of darts, 97. but he hasn't been in the Grand Slam of darts yet. Not in Wolverhampton, not in front of a crowd. So it will be a, a really different feel for Joe Cullen this year. If I remember rightly, didn't he make a mess of a finish towards the end of a group stage that, that cost him yes. progressing? You just jogged my memory about that. So you want to put that right. Uh, look, he's capable, I think, Joe Cullen, of winning anything at any time. Another 180 from Ratajski. He's going to need plenty more 
22 for the day now. We always say that if you've got around the 20 mark coming into a final, you've done really well. He's going to go up first for the 139. Now, is it trouble 13? No, double 11. 22. 22 yeah. He's checking with the referee. Game and that shot. is his biggest finish of the day. Usurping his 134 that he hit earlier. And it's a big one to stay within touching distance of Cullen. Yeah, great final. Rataishki with the higher average by virtue of those three, sorry, four maximums now. And that 139 checkout. What is it then about Rataishki being in the last final of the year? P part of me wants him to win just so Dan can ask him that question. Good luck with that, Dan. He is a master of concentration and focus, isn't he, Christopher Rataishki? And I think maybe that has a little bit to do with 60. it. 60. He's got an engine, that's for sure. He's played in a lot of long tournaments over the course of not just the, uh, this year, but previously in his career. It's a big gap, big difference in the throwing styles between the pair. Part of that down to Rataishki's concentration. He likes to take great care with every single dart. You're absolutely right, but there's one massive similarity. If you look at the way 85. that Rataishki draws the dart back towards his eye line, there's a twist. With Cullen, it's faster, but he is still drawing it back with a twist of the fingers. 83. You look at Van Gerwen, for instance, he draws the dart back without a twist. You can see that by the way that the flight spins. It's accentuated by the fact that one side of the flight is white, nice. and the other one's red, so it illustrates it through the air, whereas Cullen, you just got to focus a little bit more because it's a more symmetrical flight color. Or ready to level up. How does it go on Instagram? Level up, level up, level up. I'm trying to keep it with the kids, you see. Double 10. Oh, it's Game beautiful shot. from Matajski, a 14 darter, and that average is just going to cling with that stuff. Yeah, great final. Three apiece. A race to eight. 59. Matajski, to remind you, in the last Players' Championship event final for the fourth year in the row. Joe Cullen, well, he won the first of this year. Well, let's give Cullen credit for everything he's achieved this season. He's won a couple of these events, has suffered a dip in form over the last few months, but a lot of that part into the personal problems he was facing. Lost his mum just a couple of months ago. And darts was not a priority, rightly so. And look what he's achieved since then, and what a way it would be to sign off for the season if he was able to overhaul Christopher Rataishki in this match. That is going to take some doing. It is, because Rataishki's on a bit of a roll here. He's finding a level of form that maybe he has 96. not found most of today. He might have won eight. He's just boggling my mind. He's got five and six legs. He never does this. Hey, well, we looked at it, Paul, before, didn't we? You mentioned it, that they were on the same amount. And, and I'd said that was a lot for Christoph Rataishki, who has all oh, of a sudden become a maximum machine. Now, we then said, let's just check and see if... He's played a lot more legs than Joe Cullen. He hadn't. He played seven fewer going into the 48. final. Absolutely right. I was convinced that he was on level terms because he had been in closer matches. Well, he hadn't. Double 16. Double eight. 35. Doesn't give Cullen a chance because he hasn't got a chance. When he comes back for double four... He's going to face Cullen on tops, but the Rockstar only thinks that that 135 is an approach that will not help his cause. Ooh, I don't know if that's too close, you know. It was, Four. and Cullen is getting a freebie. What an opportunity for the lead. Double 10. Game Taken shot. as well. That double ten's been good to him. What a gift from Christoph Rataiski. But just going to bolster what we were talking about with Rataiski playing the last 
played his championship in the last four years. A couple of years ago, he played in the last European Tour event of the year as well and 100. won it. Well, it's, it's every year since he since he's had his tour card. So every year he's had the opportunity to play in the last event, he's reached the final. It is a quite 59. remarkable record for Ratajski. So is he going to be in the last game of the season on January 3rd? Yeah, well, the, the problem, the one little chink in the armour for Ratajski so far is that, I don't want to call it a failure, but... 93. The, the, he hasn't managed to get to a final on TV and the manner of defeats in semi-finals just does leave a little bit of a question 96. mark going into the big ones towards the back end of the year. It does, but he's made inroads with that this year. You look at the match play where he was given a, a really tough test in the second round by Luke Humphreys who whipped the crowd up and Ratajski was able to resist that with that incredible mindset that he has. And of course, in the World Championship Earlier this year, he was in the quarterfinals. And that was a nice boost of 50,000 ranking points for him. If he can do that again, or even one or two better, then he's going he's gonna to jump up in the rankings even more. 84. Well, you mentioned that win for Joe Cullen in that final last year. Cullen's beaten Ratajski twice since then as well. The two meetings this year have gone the way of the rock star. 6-2 and 6-3. Ratajski hasn't reached this kind of level in any of those matches. Still averaging around 104. And now looking at that. 54. Doesn't matter that it hasn't taken it this time because Cullen's not on a finish. Cullen was on 175 in the last leg. He had 135 to leave tops and Ratajski missed 99. three darts at double. Are we about to see something very similar to that? Same kind of marker on the double four. But this Game time shot. he finds the second dart, and we are tied at the halfway point. I know you love your little coincidences and quirks of darting symmetry. Who did Christoph Ratajski beat en route to that Gibraltar title you mentioned? That was Gurney in the semis, wasn't it? Yeah, Joe Cullen in the last 16. There you go. We have seen him win on the stage in the 100. BBC, just not on the TV yet, of course. Let's not forget that Christoph Ratajski is a world master as well. 140. Absolutely can't forget about that. It was a flawless performance in the year of Ratajski's birth in big time darts because he'd been around for a long time, but that was the year where he qualified 59. 10 times through the European to an Eastern European qualifier out of 11. Got himself into the Europeans because of that. Won the World Masters, and he was very much on our radar after that. We're going to see some early fireworks here from Joe Cullen. Sparkling stuff. 138. Yeah, he wants to wait until tomorrow night. I was going to call him a name there, but I won't. Just wanted to see a 170 in the last game of the year. You never know, we might. We just, and we nearly saw one from Matthew Edgar. 81. Against MVG. Double 16 for 5 4. Game shot. He's doing the right thing. He has the darts in this final. And so far, so good. He needs three, Ratajski needs four. A yeah, really good way to sign off for the season. The Players' Championships here 36. on PDC TV. It has been our pleasure to bring you the coverage. There is a Grand Slam qualifier tomorrow. That's not streamed, but of course, televised action coming up. The Grand Slam of darts getting underway in just over a week's time. Then the Players' Championship finals in Minehead. Of course, Board 2 will be streamed on PDC TV. And then the World Championship at the Alexandra Palace. Tickets available for some of those events. Head to the PDC website, pdc.tv, for more information. And pretty soon, you'll see the schedule for next year 85. as well. Excited about that, as we all are. Yeah, very much so. Never been so excited to go to Minehead, Murph. 
Yeah, do you want to, what, before we get into the conclusion of this final, do you want to share with the viewers what are the Paul Nicholson plans for 2022? Are we expecting them to hear you or see you, perhaps, you'll hear me. Stream? You'll hear me at Minehead. I'll be on board two coverage 45. with Dan Dawson. And fingers crossed, we'll be at the World Championship as well in a commentary capacity. And then early 2022, we'll be going to Q School, give that a shot. I'm not sure how much practice 39. I'm going to get with all the work I've got on. But we'll give it a go. Try a bit of a rebuilding process over the next 12 months. Try and get back into that room downstairs. I don't spend a great deal of room time in that room down there, Murph, because I am of the belief that to be in that room, you need to qualify for it. You need to deserve to be down there. So I walk through it every morning. 100. If I'm pulled aside to talk, I will talk, but not for long, because you need to earn your place on that floor. Yeah, just for the benefit of the viewers, Paul Nicholson's referring 92. to the playing arena here at the Barnsley Metrodome. Mark Hummitcher position is upstairs, out of the way, so they can't hear us. He wants double 16. He's got it. He Game just shot. loves double 16. And he's showing a bit of gumption there as the Polish Eagle. We're going into... The latter stages of a very good game between these two again. 140. Yeah. All eyes on this now. It really has been a, a decent send-off for the two of this season. Just feel like it's igniting. Could be something special. We've seen many 8-7 finals this year. Some marvellous ones 41. as well. Probably none better than that Gerwin Prize comeback from against Damon Hetter in August when all three... Finals went 8-7 in the Super Series 6. I'd echo that. That was the final of the year. Game of the year. I'd have to say it was Cross versus Dolby. It was just remarkable. Not a bad shot. The highest average we've seen in the final, incidentally, is 114.08. That was Jose de Souza against Luke Humphreys. And he's had the biggest average in a game this year, 127. Yeah, also the most 100 plus average has been a great year for Jose on the floor. Who will end the year with 32. glory? And Joe Cullen can nudge himself closer to it again here. Well, he is a Manchester United fan, isn't he? Glory, glory, Joe Cullen's 40. got a bit of a, a ring to it for him. Well, it's actually having a bit of an off leg here all of a sudden. Needs a lot to get back into it. 140. Manages a 140, but Joe Cullen, under no pressure at all, chooses double 18. 20. Wonder about that choice, do you? Yeah, the last thing you want to do is be stuck on nine. He's not. But the split option on double 18 100. is only twofold, whereas other doubles, it's threefold. Will it matter? Well, he's left himself on double nine. This could be a huge turning point if Ratajski plugs 90. And Joe Cullen was on 56 when Christoph Ratajski was on 330 in this leg. He went 20 for double 18, missed five darts at it. Ratajski gets one at the bullseye. 65. And Joe Cullen can breathe a sigh of relief. Now, does he split this? 10 double four. Every so oh, it's six double six. Oh, great that's shot. a great dart. Not just a great dart there, but because of the fact that mentally he wasn't ready for double six and double three. That's brilliant play from Cullen on the fly. Ninety. Two more legs needed for Joe Cullen to pick up his third. Players' championship title of the year. He's sixth in total. 140. To win the very first, one in the middle, and the very last in 2021. He's going for his sixth, like you say, but so is Ratajski. So the winner goes up the all-time list by one. But of course, Joe's got two European Tour event titles. Christoph's only got the 100. one. But you mentioned that Grand Slam as well. Another point that I intended to make, forgot about it, was that Joe Cullen has actually 
there's only two events, two TV events that he's played in and hasn't reached the quarterfinals. The World Championship and the Grand Slam of Darts. And he was 98. not far away from that World Championship quarterfinal last year, was he? Not at all. But he could fix both of those in the next couple of months. 140. He's not thinking about that right now. Is he going to get a shot at 1-2-1 for 7-5? Hang about. He might not. He's going to get one now. 80. This could really bring it into Joe's quarter. 11. Bull. 96. It was a chance. What does Ratajski get? Is it one at the bull? Is it two at double? Is it one at double? It is just one at the bullseye, where Cullen's just missed. Ratajski gets even closer, but not close enough. Got to be a single nine. Huge effort here for double eight from the angle. Game it's shot. in. He's seven five up with a break there. What a chance to win by eight legs to five. To do it again against Ratajski in the last PC of the year. It hasn't reached a standard that he has over the last couple of hours. Who could have maintained that 100. kind of standard? Not many. But the most important thing is he has seven legs, Ratajski has five, and it's all in Joe Cullen's hands. And let's not forget, he did win that last event of last year, and then he went on 100. to produce some fantastic performances on TV, not least in defeat to Michael Van Gogh at the World Championship, and started this year very well as well, winning the first Players' Championship 59. event of 2021. Yeah, it's largely forgotten that he won two in a row. Last one last year, first one this year. Who's to say he won't go on and win the first one next year? Yeah, but the, I mean, the start, he reached another final, didn't he? Two, two days later in Bolton, lost to Raymond van Barneveld. Yeah, that's the only one he's lost this year in a 86. final because he really should have won that one as well. He walked away from that final irate, thinking that he gave it to Raymond. And he doesn't want to give this one to Ratajski. 60. And Ratajski's starting to tire. By the way, if you're wondering who he's beaten, Gerwin Price and Johnny Clayton is the answer. They've not had bad years. 36. Yeah, not bad. Ratajski really needs to hit big and hit big now. 140. Well, that may be big enough, but Cullen with a couple of trebles can really pile the pressure on here. All he needed were four 60. good darts, potentially, to win the tournament. Christoph needs two perfect darts here. There's one of them. The bullseye again. He's missed it a couple of times. 96. He's missed it again. So Cullen has 160 to win it. Joe's not going to seal it in style. 100. But he does apply some pressure. Game Christoph shot. Ratajski refuses to buckle. The one thing that Cullen will be thinking about right now, just for a few seconds, is I had an 18 data possibility to win it that is a huge chance and Ratajski won't give up 140. and that 140 start may be the signal that we're going the distance and Cullen 45. is starting to falter he's not playing at the same level as he was early he's done a lot of great work in this final but has he hit the wall Christoph Ratajski hasn't led this final at any point. 81. All that matters is getting to eight first. And he might still do that, looks likely, to force a last leg decider. But Joe Cullen battling back. He wasn't even in the same postcode, was he, in this leg? But all of a sudden, he's thinking about winning it now. As soon as Christoph hit that one at the last visit... Cullen reset 59. himself perfectly. And if he gets another one, he 
Not going to get it, but another one would have left him 96 for the win. 40. It's a bit of feast of famine here. 45. 40. And a 180 in the middle. It's as you were, pretty much. If Ratajski slips again, Cullen will be in. 134. That's a great visit from Christoph Ratajski. What can Joe Cullen leave? He's going to leave a finish. 100. It's like groan from Paul Nichols. I'm not sure if it was audible. He felt he needed another treble, yeah, Paul. Yeah, he needed to leave 96 there. It might not matter. And doesn't Game because shot. we're going the distance. It's a one-leg shootout to see who wins PC30. It's been a terrific game. Really close, but Cullen has done everything right apart from winning the last leg. 93. Yeah, well, Joe Cullen is involved in a completely different kind of scrap to the one he had in the semi-final where he produced a, a near flawless display against Michael Van Gerwen. Hit seven out of seven on his doubles. One legs in 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 58. 11 and 15 to get to this final. It's just ridiculous. But he's having to show a different side of his game in this final, isn't he? Very much so. What he's going to have to do now is what he did in his first Players' Championship win. Win by the odd leg against Daryl Gurney. On that occasion, he came out on top. He started very well here. 100. It has been a criticism of Joe Cullen in recent years. It has been that his, his B game really hasn't been good enough. 60. Well, he might be good enough to get a title today. Well, that's a bit of a slip for Joe Cullen, but he's still in command of this leg. He looks whacked to me. He looks really tired. It's been a long three days. 130. He just needs to find a little bit more, as does Ratajski, who looks fresher. He's got to play tomorrow. 41. That really is a slip from Joe Cullen. He's handed the initiative to his opponent with back-to-back -back trebleless turns, a 60 and a 41, to leave himself without a finish and to put 97 the fate of this final in the hands of Ratajski. Massive bad news for Cullen because 112 is 66. all about 60, 20, double 16. And this is a finish that he owns. Cullen, to his credit, has left 107 after two treble ones on the last turn. But it is double 16 for Ratajski. And he wins the last event of the year and gets his revenge for 12 months ago. Christoph Ratajski shows real emotion as he wins the event.